Hey there, Philip here, and today I want to go through a session that I'm giving this Friday on a conference called Game Developer Sessions here in Prague. And I'm going to talk about how to be a successful game developer, solo game developer. Okay, so let's just go through it. It's it's an early version. Hopefully I won't do too many mistakes. Cool, so hello everyone, my name is Philip and I'm going to talk about uh, how to build successful games by yourself. So first of all, I want to tell you what I mean by success, because success for some people is very different than for other people, right? So in 2021, I built and released this game called Knights of San Francisco, and it got very good reviews on the you know game stores, it was named by three different entities as one of the best games of 2021. Uh, it got a lot of really good uh, feedback from the press. And uh, so far, it has been played by 70,000 players, uh, whereabouts. And it is making me, every month, it is making me about $1,700 every month um, without me touching it, right? So for some people, this could be success. For some other people, especially the two numbers in the bottom, this is terrible. <laughs> like, like this is for like a studio uh, looking at 70,000 players. These are paying customers, okay? But still, 70,000 players, not a lot. And this, less than $2,000 per month, that's that's not enough to, you know, to, to that's not enough for like a normal person living in, Silicon Valley or New York or anywhere else, it is barely enough for like a small family that is really frugal here in Prague. So, uh, so of course, like I, this is not my only income. I also work in uh, other things and solo game dev career. My solo game dev career is not full time because otherwise like this, this is not enough. And it's also, of course, this is a number that is currently, uh, you know, 40,000 check rounds per month, but it will go down because, you know, games are played by people for a time and then they're not anymore. So so it's not, it's it's success for me. I've, I'm very surprised that it was as successful as it was, but for a lot of other people that could be very much not a success, right? So my first advice is lower the hell out of your expectations. Even this, even this like low kind of key success uh, is still better than I I, I think like 82% of games that are launched on Steam by anyone. So it's not just solo game developers, but, but my numbers are better than 82% of games, period, okay? So lower the hell out of your expectations. Even more, I I read that in the same article where I get the 82% number from, I think 50% of games that are released make in their lifetime less than $4,000, right? That's that's terrible because you could you could basically do anything else with your life and make more money by doing it than uh then making a game and then releasing it and then having 50% chance that you'll le make less than $4,000. $4,000 seems like a lot until you realize how much work you you get to uh, to do that. So why even bother, right? And so th this is really important for me, but I can't really spend a lot of time uh, explaining this. But basically, if I look back at when I was a young person and I really wanted to create games, my um, my idea of being a, a game developer and game designer wasn't about being employed at a studio, right? I always wanted to create my own games in this similar way where uh, people who write books, uh, novelists, want to write their own book and not, you know, collaborate or be like an editor in a, like a bigger. Uh, you know, encyclopedia or something. You want to do something of your own, right? So it's, uh, to be honest, it's ego. <laughs> the the other reason, uh, very important, I think, is that why why to even bother with solo game development is that we need it. Like, 
like if you are in a studio with other people and you have to pay your bills and everything, it leads to compromises and it leads to kind of the, this like what I call meek <laughs> game design where of course, if I had people that depend on me with salaries, I would not go to the, you know, I would not be as aggressive or as radical about my choices as I am today. So so we, we need that kind of like novelist approach where you're the author of a game and you don't, like the only only person or only people you care about is the players and their feedback and you don't care about other people's egos and other people's politics and stuff, so on and so forth. So that's why you bother, okay? Uh, all right, so uh, three things I want to talk about briefly today, that the genre, the scope, and finish. Let's start with the genre. I think a lot of people, when they um, start their game dev career, especially their solo game dev career, they will just default to some very kind of obvious genres, right? So what, what can you think, like if you think about like, oh, I'm going to be a solo game developer, you think about, oh, I'm making a 2D platformer, right? Or a puzzle game or something like that, right? Uh, and my advice here very strongly is avoid the obvious genres, right? They seem simpler, like a lot of people would say like, oh yeah, I'm making a 2D platformer because it's simple to make a 2D platformer. No, it's not. It's not simple to, to make a 2D platformer. Um, but uh, more importantly, you're not meeting, you're meeting expectations. You're meeting what you think is the correct genre for you to focus on, but you're not meeting what actual players want. Here's what actual players want, right? So first of all, note the logarithmic scale of the y-axis, right? So it goes from 100,000, 10,000, 100,000, right? So orders of magnitudes. And uh, this is unnecessarily complicated. I didn't make that graph, but, but it's basically, it shows you different tags on Steam and how much those, the, the, the games with that tag made. And it gives you the top 1% top of games, how much they make, the top quartile, the median, basically the typical game, how much it makes, and then bo bottom quartile, the, the like the the worst kind of quarter of the games, right? So like even you probably would just want to look at the typical game, right, and how it makes, uh, how it fares. Look at where two D platformers are. Everyone, every new game dev kind of says like, oh, I'm going to make two D platformer because it's easy. <sighs> It's not easy. It's super hard. Also, look how, like, wh what you will probably make. You will probably make less than $1,000 in the lifetime of the game. That's the typical revenue of the game, right? If you're one of the best, uh, the 25% uh, best, you will make, uh, I don't know, is this like a 3000 or something like this? You know, we're between 10000 and 1000 in a logarithmic scale. It's, uh, it's, no, it's probably less than 3,000, right? Anyway, it's, it's just like l not a lot of money, right? And people just like spend, they spend three years making a game, but they spend like five seconds um, thinking about what the genre it, it, it should be, right? So instead, try to at least make it a little less lopsided and, and, do something like, you know, an hour or one day or one week of research of what your game should be in terms of, um, in terms of genre. And of course, like, for example, in this particular case, you could say like, okay, so I'm going to make a roguelike deck builder. That's not my message here, right? So this might change in the future. This is already probably like two years old, the, the data here. So th this could be different, but at least don't just default to the, the obvious choices, right? So this is, this is important. Look at graphs like this and, and don't just think that um, uh, what other game developers do is what you should be doing. That's the opposite of what you should be doing. You should be doing what people actually want to play. And the other thing is, 
uh, I know that I'm not talking in right now. It's probably sounds like I'm talking about money and uh, as a measure of success, it's not like I don't, I care more about the, uh, you know, the accolades and, and how many people actually play my game than how much money I make. I am privileged in that uh, respect. But here I'm showing you numbers of in sales because it's a good measure. It's a good indicator of how people want that kind of thing, right? If people are basically throwing money at anyone who makes any kind of like Forex game or simulation and management game, you should notice and you should make sure that that's, that's what you're... Uh, or at least give it a, a second to think, should I make something like this? Okay. Second, scope. All right, S managing scope, how big your game will be and how much many features it will ha have. That's important for any game developer, but for solo game developers, it's like even more, right? And uh, there, the advice is half the scope. Like you have some kind of idea of what your game should be, right? You have this like ball of ideas and mechanics and cool features, and then you just take half of them <laughs> and throw them away. And I don't care. You can you can think you can say you know what uh, I'm going to use it for my next game. It doesn't matter how much you lie to yourself about what you're going to do to that, but half the scope of the game. And then you have this like you know, crippled game and you're like, this is barely a game. It's, it's actually, you know, how is this? There's so, so much cool stuff was in that part, you know? And then you halve it again because you are a solo game developer. You can't do all that. You have to really, really, really uh, do all the, you know, like do away with everything in the scope that is extraneous. And then you do it again, ideally. I wasn't able to, but... But uh, two halving of the scope is where it's at. Uh, so anyway, halving the scope is is or like just just be, being really brutal about uh, reducing the scope of the game is important. The problem is, of course, what do you cut? You know, what parts of the game are important and what not? And I think a lot of people will do the. And I see this a lot. If if you look at games from solo game developers, they will say, oh, okay, so I need to remove all the complexity and just focus on like how it looks like. And that's I think the opposite of what you should do. Or at least like in my genres, on the in the genres that I'm interested about about. Uh you still need polish and everything, but you want to uh you want to keep the the depth and do away with everything else, uh, which means that your game will look different and worse than games of bigger studios. Uh, it will definitely not look like an AAA game, but it will be uh, deep. It will be something that's rewarding as a as a simulation as a world, right? So my example. For Knights of San Francisco, my first vision was to have basically like a Skyrim in text, right? So you would have all this like simulation of a fantasy world. You could go anywhere and everything would be simulated, but it would be rendered in text with just paragraphs of text, right? And I could go two ways. Obviously, this was way too much for me, right? I could go two ways. One way would be to say, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm going to do it in a way that that is much more easier for me to program. You know, like I will write all the stuff myself, basically a game book uh, or, uh, you know, a choose your own adventure book. And uh, but I will make it really nice and I will add a lot of cool uh, stuff to it. Right. And uh, once again, this this light uh, always goes off anyway. Um, but always when I'm uh, recording. Anyway, so I could do that, but instead I kept the, for, for the game itself, I kept the complexity that, that, that the game, Knights of San Francisco, is a game in which you slash off someone's hand and then the hand itself exists in the world and you can take it and you can use it as a club or whatever, you can throw it at someone. 
I felt that is more important to keep, even though of course it's work, than to keep all like the uh, the the uh, breath right. So so in the final game, it's basically just ninety to uh, ninety minutes to two hours of gameplay. It's like a small D and D session. You're done in two hours. Uh, it is only you know it is only fifteen illustrations no animation nothing right but the complexity and the simulation is there and that's what i left and i think that's why it's it resonates with people with my next game giant robot game it's the same right like like it's it looks terrible <laughs> but i left the complexity in there you know you can aim at anything you can construct stuff you can hack stuff you can change the environment but it all looks very bad. Um, it's like 70, 1970s graphics, but to me that's okay. I'm I don't care about. I mean I can't compete with with the bigger players, uh, but I can. But I can keep the complexity and the simulation in there. All right, and then I can lean in, right? So the same way that I in Knights of San Francisco, I leaned into the kind of the you know, black and white reading app experience. Here I can lean into the very crude 1970s uh, feel and um, graphics. And again, an AAA studio or even like a smaller indie studio would not have screens like this, but I don't care, I, I have them, that's fine. All right, and when you're talking about scope, uh, sooner or later, you'll have to list all the features that you would love to have in the game, and you'd ha you'll have to figure out. Okay, so this feature, in, in this case, this feature is like okay, uh, will take me three days. Like in fighting, monster in fighting, really cool. It has the coolness factor of seven. It will take me three days, and then you will list all these things, all these cool things that you think about, and then you realize, you know what? I don't have time for 90% of these. And you'll have to somehow sort them and just get rid of the, the, the ones that you're not gonna use, right? Um, and I remember when I first did this a little spreadsheet, I realized that with all the stuff that I wanted in the game, this is Knights of San Francisco, with all the stuff that I wanted in the game, I would have worked for three or four more years before I was gonna release so be be very humble and uh, honest with how much work everything takes all right so uh, and then finish actually finishing the game right we all know know this loop I just saw it in a, a like a meme dump somewhere you get a new idea you start a new project you tell everyone and then you don't finish you 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 get a new idea and then do the same loop again and again right so the, I think the main thing to realize, and I talk about this all the time, is keep grinding, expect the even game development, maybe even especially game development, especially especially solo game development, is hard work. It's not, it's, it feels like it should be fun, but it's not, it's, it's work. And it gets worse after you start. Like the, the first few weeks, are amazing because you're building this all new thing and here you know you have all these ideas and then later and later it gets harder and harder and a lot of people kind of think oh okay so I must be doing something wrong it's it feels so unfun I should start a new project no this is normal uh, grinding in game development is normal and expected and you should just go through it okay I love this uh, article by Derek Yu, who later made Spelunky. This is an article that you can just, if you Derek search for Derek Yu finishing a game, you'll find it. Find it. It's from the year 2010, so it's now 13 years old. And uh, in there, he says how, yeah, how basically he sees all these people who have, who are really talented but have never finished a game, and. I, I found this article maybe five years ago and I reread it every year uh, because I, f I think it's, it's really good. So you should read it too. 
and it says things about it's talking about grinding you know grind is normal uh it stops about uh making excuses excuses to start over again and again and again right so we all are like that uh and it also talks about the last 10 percent where the last 10 percent of making any game is possibly the hardest part you know you do things like okay i need now need to make sure that there's enough content that uh, you know there's a main menu settings all these like really grindy bad things tutorial is really hard to make and it, you probably do it uh, almost at the end right so it's 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 hard uh, but you can learn how to finish finishing is a skill it's not something that you grow up with not, it's not like Derek Yu was somehow endowed better than anyone else to finish games. No, he learned how to do it. And if you follow his advice and if you are a little stricter on yourself than, than you'd normally be, then uh, anyone can finish a game. And uh, that, that's what I think. I, I truly think that 99% of my success is that I actually released... I think a lot, there's a lot of really talented people who are more talented than me that if they actually released that where if they actually said you know what this sucks but I'm going to go through with this anyway they would make a better game than I did and it would my game would not be the best of 2021 because because there would be a thousand others that were that would be better right so uh so just uh you know you're probably talented. Just just go ahead and 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 actually release. And you, your first game might not be the success that you need, but at least you'll finish. And the f finishing is where it's at. Um, you will also look at things differently once you finish a game. Like you know how you are bound to look at other people's games and be like, oh, why did they do this? This is terrible. Uh, I would do it differently. Well, once I finished my game, um, I started being much more humble about my feedback to others. <laughs> because, yeah, um, it's hard. All right, so... Yeah, is this it? Yeah, that's it. All right, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching the rehearsal. Please tell me, like, today... <laughs> if there's something that you would change because it uh, is obviously, uh, you know, I can still change things before Friday, Friday afternoon. And uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Bye.